Hi, welcome back to Colour in Your Life. I'm Sophia Stacey. And I'm Natasha Wernick. And we'd like to take you on a journey to see some of the best artists in Australia. I'll be filming. And I'll be your host. So come with us and enjoy this unique opportunity to enter artist studios and see how they do what they do. We all have the ability to be artistic and we are going to show you some fabulous artists to inspire you to pick up that paintbrush and get creative. Well, welcome back to Colour in Your Life and today we are in Templestone, Victoria Correct. in the yes. Fabulous studio of Judith Lamont. Judith, welcome back to the show. <laughs> Sophia, thank you. And I can't believe how quickly those years have gone. Oh my when goodness. When you think the date that we last did the filming. And the reason we say that is because we filmed Judith in 2014 in your other fabulous studio, <laughs> but you've recently moved here to Templestowe and you've got this amazing gallery Oh, oh, what would you call it? Is it like a, a showroom? Showroom a, home gallery. Which you've got all your statues and your paintings in. Yes, yes. had to find somewhere to put them all. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time Judith was on the show, you were demonstrating um, a, painting a horse in oils and you Correct. were just starting to dabble in sculpture. Yes. But this has taken off for you. Can you tell us how that evolved from painting to sculpture? Uh, it's. A progressive move into sculpture. Yes, still concentrating on horses and dogs. Mm -hmm. They are my inspiration. Yes. They bring me a lot of excitement, a lot of joy. It's your passion, isn't it? That's a passion. It's a passion since childhood and it's never left me. Yeah. And so today uh, we're going to be going down into the garden and Judith is going to show us uh, how she starts with one of her maquettes. Correct. And yes. and we've got a couple of uh, German short-haired pointers, pointers <laughs> coming on. And But then we're going to come back in the studio and uh, Judith's going to show um, this wonderful technique. It's an exercise, well, especially for beginners, to learn to, to use and handle um, clay. I use an oil-based clay. Mm -hmm. and um, which doesn't dry out so you can see the models in the studio here which are a huge support to whether it's my painting or drawings and um, they all feed off each other and um, so I'll be showing um, a best relief and going through the steps on learning how to handle and manipulate the clay and it um, takes out all that um, overwhelming um, effect for when you work on on um, these wire armatures to create the three-dimensional. So we're starting off um, for beginners to have fun. Great, great. Well, let's go down into the garden and go and see these rascally dogs. I can hear them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks, Sophia. Thank you. All right, let's go. <laughs> Okay, Judith, well, we're down here in Judith's beautiful front yard and we have Zena and Leo with us. And uh, so you, you love to observe the dogs. Yes, Sophia, yes. It's really important to observe and feel empathy um, with whether it's a dog or a horse. Um, really important to get to know the breed Yes. The dog. We have German short head pointers here. Oh, aren't they uh, divine? Oh god, they're divine. They're so lovely and, and we soft. Have, so we have a male and a female. Leo, the male. Xena, female. You can tell the difference in the head shape, um, and that's really uh -huh. important to to take notes of. He's got the the broader head and a finer head. Um, obviously, same breed, but you have to find these defining features to put into sculpture. All breeds are different. Um, and that's what makes it really exciting, makes good sculpture, is to see their definition, see their energy. And being sporting dogs, they move, they really mm. move. So we've got them sitting quietly at the moment, <laughs> and, um, but we might see them in a bit of action A few soon. treats has helped that yeah. along the way, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I'm doing here is um, a maquette, but it's classified as a field study, okay. um, which is what I like to do 
outside in the open with the dogs, again, just observing. As we're chatting, I'm observing what they're doing here. Nice. And you put all that energy into the sculpture. So um, forever I'm looking, keeping it recorded in my mind. So when I get back into the studio, it's all there without photographs mm -hmm. and can come out as the energy into the sculpture. I do a lot with my hands. Um, we've got tools here also um, to get different fine um, features, um, such as just digging in, and it, depending what sort of marks you want to make. Every sculpture works differently. I like to use a lot of impressions with my thumbs to get the energy, <laughs> and so a lot of pushing in. This is oil-based clay, yes. so the clay has an oil base rather than the water-based clay which dries out. So this is not, oh, and so you can really mush it about. Being oil-based, they don't need to be wrapped. So how long will that stay pliable for? Forever. Really? Yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, so you can just work on it at any time. The more you work on it, the softer the clay is, and you can really get impressions. So can you just get that clay from any um, normal art supply store? Yeah, sure, Sophia. Um, the sculpting supplies have have them. Uh, you can also purchase online, um, but very accessible. Yeah. Well, this is very exciting because I've just started playing with clay. Oh, <laughs> Leo, good boy. And uh, I find that the water-based clay is very drying on my hands. Yes. But what does that feel like? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. like a plasticine. It's very soft. I don't want to let the dogs go. No, don't. <laughs> don't let the dogs Do out. Do not let the dogs out. Do not let the dogs eat the clay. <laughs> They're doing very well, aren't they? Good they are doing a sterling oh. job. They are doing really wow, well. Wow, that's, that's so lovely. It's beautiful. To play with. Yes. So there's soft oil base, which is what I use. Mm -hmm. You can get a harder um, oil base clay also. But I prefer this. Everyone is different with what they mm. prefer, their preference. But the more you use it, the softer it gets also that, that's pliable. It's just really it's lovely gorgeous. to play with. You will love it. I'll yes. give you a block before you go. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> you can have a play. We can all have a play. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you, Sophia. So, no, it's good because I can quickly move things around as, as I'm working and also on different angles too. So, as we had uh, Leo and Zena moving about before, um, you know, I was looking, observing, and you have to see them in the three-dimensional. And when you think it was just, you know, a piece of clay like this. A blob. A blob. And the blob has to turn into Leo or Zena. Mm. And, um, and that's just the beauty. That's what makes sculpture fun, because you're striving, always striving. And you've got it on a little armature there. Yes, armature. It's a wire armature, which I'll show you in the studio. Um, so it's clay built up on the wire armature. So the wire is the support. That's the support. and you can twist the wire into whatever position you want for the leg movement. Mm -hmm. Here we've got um, one of the, the pointers actually pointing, which is a natural stance in the field when they've spotted a prey. Standing poses are also good, but you still have to have energy in a standing pose by the, you know, the look of the head, you know. And uh, um, I, take, I do take photos as well as observing. We've got. <laughs> but I do have a decoy to show you how these. I think Zena's just getting a bit restless. <gasps> What's going on here? Look. Oh, ho, ho. Now, Sophia, this is what yes. I would use also um, when I'm observing the dogs. I do take photos. Yes. But I like to do these field studies <laughs> to show their energy. But you can see to grab you their just attention. Don't work with dogs and <laughs> animals and children, yeah. eh? Look what happens when we <gasps> have a. What's that? Leo, What's no. That? Zena? 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 Good babies. So at, at the moment, are you observing their characters? Oh, absolutely. And their face? While they're doing that and they're still, look at the expression on their faces. Yes. Both are different, both are different expressions. Ah. But they're looking, they're wondering. Okay, well. <laughs> Well done, well done. They've been so good today, really. But uh, I think they're getting a bit restless and the wind's picking up. And the monkey's We're, about to go. The monkey's about to get <laughs> chewed up. But they've been... got birds in the trees. So how about we go back in the studio and see what you're going to show us Good there. idea. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Sophie. Thank, Thank you, you, puppies. Thank you, puppies. Good, good puppies.
Okay, Judith, we're yeah. back in your fabulous studio, but yes. you wanted to show us um, something with the armature. Yes, yes. These are um, armatures for the maquettes. Um, it's a very soft, what they call armature wire. It's mm. soft and can bend. But, um, but at the same time, you need the oil-based clay to be able to grip to the wire. And so we have a smaller armature wire, so it's very, very soft and pliable. And you can just cut a certain length, like so. Keep your fingers out of the way. And you can just wrap it around easily. The support wire. And so does that help the clay bind to the... It grips, it grips, it doesn't slide. Right. So that is a support. Um, setting up the armature is a very important part of the sculpture. If the armature is not right, the sculpture is not going to be right. So it ne you need time to think and almost visualise the piece while you're building the armature into a certain shape. So you can easily move things about for, um, say for the legs of the dog. You know, you can push it around like that until you get the shape that you want. When I'm devising the, the armature, already in my mind I know what I'm going to sculpt. So you're thinking about that as you're putting the wire into place. Uh, the clay is clayette, it's an oil-based clay, it comes in a block, like so, and then I just cut the pieces into smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. And presumably we have put this armature into position for the, what we want as the pose. But just to show you how well the oil-based clay sticks to the wire, I can just show you like that. Oh, just, and really all you do is filling in, filling in, it's the space, you're adding volume to the armature. But also at the same time, as you're putting the clay on, you're still thinking about how the finished piece is going to be. You're still thinking about the dog or the horse. But so every piece you put on is all well thought out. You just don't randomly put clay on the wire. You're always thinking. Well, as you can <laughs> see around your studio, you're very prolific with your work. The pieces I have here, they're all works in progress. They're studies, um, as you would be sketching in a sketchbook. These are sketches in clay. And when you talk about your love of animals, mm. two beautiful dogs that you love very dearly, yes. Ruby and Dior. Sadly, they passed um, just over a year ago, five weeks between each other. They were twin sisters and mm. they just couldn't be without each other. Both of those sculptures were very much an emotional exercise mm. and it took me a long time to, to be able to, to sculpt them. The memory of them is just entrenched in my heart. But today you're going to actually be putting some clay on board. Mm. So uh, let's have a look at how you do that. Okay, great. So Judith, I've never seen this done before. And um, can you explain to me what you're doing there? Sure. It's purely an exercise, um, again, to learn the understanding of the anatomy and the makeup of dogs or horses or even humans, really. It's purely an exercise. You can take it to another level as a best relief and have a mould made of it um, and take it to the foundry. But for me, um, it's an exercise. Again, with sketching, I, um, these two actually support each other and, again, learning the structure of the animal. Through COVID, you did a lot of these sketches. Yes, there was a positive in the lockdown and I knuckled down and, and just learnt more about charcoal drawing. And also I do a lot of commission work now with the charcoal drawings. Um, it's become quite fashionable um, for people to collect. As I was explaining before, the, the oil-based clay is a beautiful soft medium to work with. And what I've done here is just sketched out my dog form here, the, the pointer, and Pretty well just covering um, the base and what I like to do, just push it down. Just got to keep pushing it down so it actually does stick. You can use even plasticine. I like to just cover the whole form and then slowly it just build up. And you, you have done some uh, workshops for this as well, haven't you? Yes, I've done workshops. Um, I intend to do more workshops here in the home studio. Uh, again, on sculpture, 
and do some exercises like this and also discuss um, you know building an armature and working on some forms. So if people want to find out more about your workshops they can yeah. go to your website Correct. which is judithlemon.com.au You'll have a section in there that people can go to and they can register or find out more. Correct, yes. All the information is on my website about commissions and the process and it's, um, well, commissions bring me a lot of joy. Well we're just pushing this along a little bit more, just trying to get some depth into this. But what you've done for us is uh, you've actually uh, prepared another piece that's a little bit further along so you can show us uh, how you how you develop it. Yes. Shall we go and get that yeah. piece? And yes. yes, I will definitely do that. Okay, Judith, you've put the other piece up there and that looks like it's either nearly finished or it is finished. It's finished for the exercise that we're doing today. Um, as you can see, I've just kept building up the form, um, the volume, and it has now started to look a three-dimensional piece. Again, as the exercise for learning how to sculpt eyes, nostrils, it's a perfect way to start. And um, so to get the three-dimensional look even further, I like to um, paint black acrylic um, on the board and um, and so today I'm using the Matisse ivory black it really makes the relief stand out and already you can get the impression of more of the three-dimensional so you just probably more careful just going around the edges this was important for you to show beginners how to get into sculpture yeah absolutely um, you don't have to worry about getting an armature made um, it's not overwhelming, whereas sometimes to do a three-dimensional piece like that is overwhelming because you have to really concentrate on all sides of the sculpture. Whereas here, just to start, just to get excited, is the best approach. Not long after you did the last Colour in Your Life show, I believe that you were commissioned to do a life-size bronze of the famous Roy Higgins. Correct, yes, it was not long after the show and I had word from um, Brian Martin and it was to be housed at Flemington Victoria Racing Club and this was to be um, a tribute to Australia's famous jockey, Roy Higgins. But as you can see, as the, um, the board is being covered, the sculpture is standing out. That's given us a great example of how you don't have to learn all about armatures if you want mm. to just start to oh, get into sculpture. Exactly. You can just get your clayette or um, clayette or your plasticine uh, and just start. Just give it a go. But we're actually going to go into your gallery showroom and we're going to talk about a project that you did called Eleven. So yeah. how about we... Uh, wind up here and go and have a look in there. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here we are in Judith's gallery showroom. Uh, it's just such a glorious room, Judith. Thank you. Well, it really um, gives me opportunity to show off my work to clients when they come to the studio and also houses at this stage the story 11. And this is a very personal project that was very dear to your heart, isn't it? Yes. Uh, in all, it was a two-year project. Um, wow. It didn't start from 1 to 11. Uh, it's titled 11 to commemorate the close of the First World War, the 11th hour, the 11th day, the 11th month mm. in um, 1918. It's a very emotional story that's attached to all of this. Oh, it's, it's, it was epic, really. Um, it really shows the vital role of horses. Over 135,000 horses, not including mules and donkeys, left our shores in World War I, and they did not return. What I really want people to do is just stop and think about our horses and all animals in war and what they do and how um, and the harsh conditions 
that they went through as well as our soldiers, but the horses did not have a voice. So I feel as though it was my responsibility as an artist sculptor to be able to tell the story. There's also a emotional attachment with your grandfather who was a great influence in uh, you as becoming an artist. Tell Correct. us more about yes. that. Uh, he was in the Belgian artillery in World mm -hmm. War One, and yes his influence with painting sort of put me on the path as a career. But also my great uncle fought in First World War and he did survive and, and return home. My second cousin Joe Radnell, he was in the Third Light Horse and he was killed at the Battle of Romani. My great uncle Rone was in the Belgian Resistance. So I feel as though all this background um, was all part of the reason why I needed to express in this current day the vital role our horses played. And um, I'm getting emotional. It's a very emotional <laughs> story and uh, you can almost feel the tears coming up, you know, I could see your, your eyes <laughs> swelling up a bit. Uh, yeah. But it's such an important story to tell in Australian yeah. history. Yes, and I think the most important fact that um, the soldiers were so attached to their horses. This sculpture titled Weary really says it all, but um, 36 hours the soldiers and horses travel to the Battle of Beersheba mm. without water or food. Then after 36 hours, they went into battle and charged mm. six miles. I got emotional sculpting the piece, so I can only just imagine how sad and how soul-destroying it must have been for a soldier who had to say goodbye to his companion that took him through many stages of war. I think people need to remember this story, mm. not to be forgotten. I'd love to thank you for uh, having us in your studio today, but also welcoming us back oh. after yeah. uh, well, how many years has it been? Yeah. But uh, 2014 it was when we last yeah. saw you. But um, a, a, an amazing growth from painting into the sculpture and such an important story to tell in Australian history and for around the world. If you want to go and see some more about this exhibition, The Eleven, it's all on Judith's website, which once again is... judithlamon.com.au And people can go there and um, contact you for commissions yes. and see all your other paintings that you have done yes. over the years yes. and, and workshops as well. Yes. And uh, if you want to come and find out more about Colour in Your Life, you can go to colourinyourlife.com.au. But uh, until we meet again, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. <laughs> and thank you, Judith. Thank so you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>